Good morning. Welcome to Trinity on the last Sunday of Pentecost. We're this close to starting Advent. It's hard to believe we're moving into the Christmas season. Today is the last Sunday of Pentecost, otherwise known as Christ the King Sunday. Would you join me for worship, beginning on page 355? Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be His kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. To Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, who will it is to restore all things in your well-beloved Son, the King of kings and Lord of lords, mercifully grant that the peoples of the earth, divided and enslaved by sin, may be freed and brought together under his most gracious rule, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, One God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Jeremiah. Woe to the shepherds who destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, says the Lord. Therefore, thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, concerning the shepherds who shepherd my people. It is you who have scattered my flock and have driven them away, and you have not attended to them. So I will attend to you for your evil doings, says the Lord. Then I myself will gather the remnant of my flock out of all the lands where I have driven them, and I will bring them back to their fold, and they shall be fruitful and multiply. I will raise up shepherds over them who will shepherd them, and they shall not fear any longer or be dismayed, nor shall any be missing, says the Lord. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch, and he shall reign as king and deal wisely, and shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In his days Judah will be saved, and Israel will live in safety. And this is the name by which he will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. The word of the Lord. We will continue our worship with Canticle 16. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies 
from the hands of all who hate us. He promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from Colossians. May you be made strong with all the strength that comes from his glorious power, and may you be prepared to endure everything with patience while joyfully giving thanks to the Father who has enabled you to share in the inheritance of the saints in the light. He has rescued us from the power of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in him all things in heaven and on earth were created things visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or powers, all things have been created through him and for him. He himself is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, so that he might come to have first place in everything. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him God was pleased to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, by making peace through the blood of his cross. The word of the Lord.
holy gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. When they came to the place that is called the Skull, they crucified Jesus there with the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing, and they cast lots to divide his clothes. And the people stood by watching, but the leaders scoffed at him, saying, He saved others. Let him save himself. If he is the Messiah of God, his chosen one, the soldiers also mocked him, coming up and offering him sour wine and saying, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was only an inscription over him. This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who were hanging there kept deriding him and saying, Are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation. And we indeed have been condemned justly, for we are getting what we deserve for our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And he replied, Truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. The Gospel of the Lord. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be pleasing to you. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, good morning. It's hard to believe. We really are rounding the basis, coming to the end of another liturgical year. Today is Christ the King Sunday, hence the gospel lesson, where today we remember that Jesus the King really did go to the cross and paid the full price for us. We always end the calendar year right there in that spot. Next week, we'll jump into Advent, the preparation time, preparing us for a new liturgical year, a new beginning, if you will, the birth of Jesus once again. But today, here we are. We've got this passage. It's a fascinating passage. Jesus is dying. They're mocking his kingdom. And yet, he's still in this interesting way, as he's dying, says, you're for me. I'm your friend. I came to do this for y'all. He makes that wonderful statement, forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. Have you ever received acceptance and love when you knew you didn't deserve it? Or perhaps you got something that has happened to you out of the blue. It was a massive surprise. Several years ago, there was in Florida, I grew up a Florida State fan, And there was this wonderful story about a young autistic boy in Travis Rudolph. Rudolph was a famous football player for FSU several years ago, and they were visiting some of the schools, and he did something really special for this autistic boy, a boy that wasn't liked very well, who had stopped being asked to the parties, who sat alone most days. And his mother was so taken back that here's what she wrote in the Florida Times. Several times lately, I have tried to remember my time in middle school. Did I like my teachers? Do I even remember them? Did I have many friends? Did I sit with anyone at lunch? Just how many, many mean kids were there? I remember one kid on the bus called me Tammy Faye Baker because I had started wearing eye makeup in the sixth grade. I remember being tough and calling him a silly name back. But when he couldn't see me any longer, I cried. I do remember middle school being scary and hard and something I don't want to go back to. Now that I have a child starting middle school, I have feelings of anxiety for him, and they can be overwhelming if I let them. Sometimes I'm grateful for his autism. That may sound like a terrible thing to say, But in some ways, I think, I hope, it shields him. He doesn't seem to notice when people stare at him when he flaps his hands. 
He doesn't seem to notice that he doesn't get invited to the birthday parties anymore. And he doesn't seem to mind if he eats lunch alone. It's one of my daily questions for him. Was there a time today you felt sad? Who did you eat lunch with today? Sometimes the answer is a classmate, but most days it's nobody. Those are the days I feel sad for him, but he doesn't seem to mind. He is a super sweet child who always has a smile and a hug for everyone who meets him. A friend of mine sent this beautiful picture to me today, and when I saw it with the caption, Travis Rudolph is eating lunch with your son, I replied, who's that? He said, the FSU football player. Then I had tears streaming down my face. Travis, a wide receiver at the Florida State, and several other FSU players had visited my son's school today. I'm not sure what exactly made this incredibly kind man share a lunch table with my son, but I'm happy to say that it will not soon be forgotten. This is one day I didn't have to worry if my sweet boy ate alone. Because he sat across from someone who was his hero and who was a hero in my eyes, Travis, thank you so much. You made this mama exceedingly happy and have made us fans for life. Yours truly. What's your biggest fear? If you're like me, your biggest fear is rejection. We never really get past middle school, do we? We have scars that scarred us and struck us in middle school, and they stay with us just like they did this young mom. What is it for you that takes you back to middle school, to sitting alone at lunch? We all know too well the lessons we learned at a young age, that judgment and rejection absolutely kills like a dagger in the heart. Some of the most painful times of life and some of the biggest wounds we carry around have to do with times when we really, really, really badly want and need to be wanted and needed and loved and accepted from someone, something. But we receive judgment and rejection too often. What is it? Is it the teammate? That band friend? The cool table? The college situation? The frat? The sorority? That girl? That boy? The job? The boss? The club? Your mom? Your dad? Your spouse? What is it that cuts you and strikes you when you think about it? I remember as a young boy, I played baseball for Arlington Little League. And in fifth grade, I was playing on the team and thought I was an okay player until my coach said, do you play any other sports? Because you're horrible at baseball and you really should consider something else. I'm sorry, you're just not good enough was the message. Whether implied or stated directly, it kills like nothing else. And I would conjectured that many, many of our deepest problems and destructive behaviors are rooted in some memory or feeling of fear or rejection. And in a sense, we all know it deeply, down deep in our hearts, which is why being accepted when it happens feels so good. When we know we deserve rejection and judgment, but we receive acceptance and love instead, it's just the best thing. It's the most wonderful thing in the world, isn't it? Both our passage this morning and the fact that the lectionary calendar today is Christ the King Sunday, both of these things have everything to do with rejection and acceptance. It's a dichotomy, if you will, but not in the way you'd think. You see, Jesus is the King, and in a way that should terrify us because kings aren't really known to be super nice people or loving people. They don't want to have anything to do with those commoners like me or perhaps like you. In fact, most aristocrats don't want to deal with the lower class. Whether you're on Silicon Valley or you're head of the legislation or whatever it may be, most people who are up here, like a king, don't typically want to have dinner with the sweet little family down the street who's on food stamps. It's beneath them. Rejection stings, and it hurts. 
The biggest question that terrifies uh, all of us is, what is God like, and will he reject me? In the wonderful gospel passage, there were two others being killed next to Jesus with the same question, what if God rejects me? Both common criminals who probably were your stereotypical bad guys, and they have something very important to teach us, actually to tell us. Have you ever learned something incredibly important from someone or something that you despise or look down upon? That's what's happening here. Jesus had just said those beautiful words in verse 39. We didn't read them this morning, but if you just back up a few verses, you would have heard them. He said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. They do not know what they do. And then our passage picks up one of the criminals who were hanging railed at him, saying, Are you not the Christ? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God? Since you are under the same sentence of condemnation, and we indeed justly, for we receiving what we are due. But he did nothing. He did nothing wrong. Let me be clear. The criminals are not the heroes in the story. Jesus is the hero. Those criminals are us. Really, all of humanity can identify with one of, or both of these criminals. We are guilty as charged, but either believing and receiving and trusting God's gift of reconciliation and acceptance in Jesus or taking on the rejection that we think we reserve. So the first criminal says something that according to the wisdom of the world really makes a lot of sense. What does he say? He says, hey Jesus, you say you're the king, you say you're here to save us, why don't you do it? Save yourself and us. Are you just a liar, Jesus? Are you really not the Messiah? If you really are who you say you are, come on down off this cross and save me too, because I deserve it. That's what the one criminal is saying. You can almost sense the tone of entitlement and pride behind the terror and the anger and the rage of this dying man. But the second criminal says something that, well, according to the wisdom of the world, sounds quite foolish. He says something that enrages a world that's convinced that if we're going to get anything in life, or if we're going to get eternal life, or if we're going to be accepted by God, we're going to have to earn it by merit. Don't you see, he says to his fellow thief and to us, we are the guilty ones. We're getting what we deserve right now. We deserve to die. We deserve to be rejected, you silly criminal over there. The criminal on this side is being honest about his condition. He knew just how great his need was. And when you know your need is great, when you've got nothing else to lose, when you've come to the end of yourself, you get pretty good at accepting gifts. And that's right where the second criminal is. He's at the end of himself. And that's where God is calling us this morning to, to a place of honesty about ourselves, to a place of repentance, to turning away from ourselves and into a merciful, into the mercies, into the hands, if you will, of another. You see, maybe he heard Jesus say those words just a little bit ago, Father, forgive them. And maybe this criminal started to think, wait, is he talking about me? Is there a chance that he's saying my sins are forgiven? Remember, forgiveness breeds repentance. For friends, so often we resist it. We will balk at God's free grace until we finally realize just how much we need it. Until we realize that our only hope for acceptance is Jesus and his love for us. So this dirty, dying criminal is teaching those who think we have it all together that the beginning of the answer for us is to confess that we are far from having it together. 
Receiving God's love and acceptance and forgiveness begins with admitting that we deserve rejection. The second criminal goes on to say in verse 41, but this man has done nothing wrong. And he says, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom? Isn't that beautiful? He's throwing himself on the mercy of the one who created him. The criminal cries out, Jesus, I know you're the innocent one here. I know you don't deserve to be here, but I do. And I know my only chance of acceptance, my only chance of love, my only chance for life, my only chance for salvation is with you. Jesus, will you remember me? Jesus, don't forget me. Remember me. Jesus, you're my only hope. Does that express your desire this morning? Because remember, you and I are the criminals on the cross. And how do you think Jesus will reply? Verse 43, he said to him, Truly, I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. Jesus responds not with the killing words of rejection, but with the life-giving words of love and acceptance. Son, you're with me today. You're with me. Not sitting in time out, not being sent to your room, not lecturing, not shame. No, just you wait, young man. No rejection. You're in. You're with me forever. You're accepted because I love you. So this criminal, this one who deserves nothing but rejection and condemnation, in one fell swoop, received the keys to the kingdom, eternal love and acceptance from his loving creator who was actively doing for him what he could not do for himself. You mean he gets off scot-free, you might be asking? Yep. And so will you if you're with him. You see, getting off scot-free throughout the declaration of God's grace and mercy through his son Jesus is the only way we sinners are going to get off at all. But you say, he didn't do anything. He didn't even earn anything. He has nothing to offer there dying. Nope, not a thing. But that's what King Jesus does. He gives his children undeserved gifts of love and acceptance scandalously. It's a little crazy. But for those of us who have tried and tried and tried to earn acceptance and have come up empty, it's the best news around. Isaiah 28, Behold, I am laying in Zion a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. Why? Because he loves us. He really, really loves us. So what now? For those of us living under God's yes, for those of us living under God's smile, Here's what we do now. We simply live life as creatures loved by our Creator, which is what we're made to do in the first place. What if we really lived like we were loved? What if we lived like we were loved by the one person that really matters? What if we lived like we really did believe that we were accepted by our Creator because of the work of Jesus. Know what it would be like? It would look like paradise. For you too will be with me in paradise, as Jesus says from the cross. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, now that we know that we have been received. We're not rejected. We're received. Let us stand and profess what we know to be true through the words of the Nicene Creed, found on page 358. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, 
the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again. In accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray to our God through Jesus Christ, King of the Jews and Messiah who saves all peoples. For Mark, our bishop-elect, for Susan, suffragan bishop, for this holy gathering, and for the people of God in every place. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the leaders of the nations and all in authority, and for mercy, justice, and peace among all peoples. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For good weather, abundant fruits of the earth, and peaceful times. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For our community and those who live in it, and for our families, companions, and all those we love, especially those named on our parish prayer list. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all those in danger and need, the sick and the suffering, prisoners, captives, and their families, the hungry, homeless, and oppressed. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those who rest in Christ and for all the departed, especially those whom we now name in the silence of our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For our deliverance from all affliction, strife, and need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lifting our voices with all creation, with all the saints, let us offer ourselves and one another to the living God through Christ. Amen. Amen. God of the ages, you reconcile all things to yourself in Christ. Hear the prayers we offer this day and remember us in your kingdom through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most, Most merciful, merciful God. God. We, we confess, confess that, that we have, have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let's greet each other in peace. Good morning. I'm so glad you're joining us on the virtual service. Welcome to Trinity. I hope you know that there is a place for you here. A couple of quick announcements. Next week we will begin Advent, and so I'm going to ask that you begin now preparing yourself for the greatest day the world has ever known, the birth of Jesus. For the next four weeks, starting next week, we will begin each week lighting our Advent candle and preparing ourselves and anticipating 
just as the early church did, the wonderful announcement that the Messiah has come. And so join us in that endeavor. Also want to invite you to many of the things happening here in our parish over the next couple days. You'll see a little advert here in our bottom of our screen with the many dates happening. We've got concerts and musicals and children's celebrations and you name it, it's happening. So look at the different things happening and plan to join us during the season of Advent and then join us for Christmas Eve services. We'll have three services. Hopefully one of those match up to a time that you can join us live and you can be with us here in this church. Well, let me invite you to continue to give to this parish. We're so grateful for all of your gifts, knowing that at Trinity, there's a place for you. You can simply give by clicking on the prompt here in the bottom of your screen. Well, let's come to the table now, knowing that Jesus is our host, and he is the one that receives us with no rejections. You are in because he says so. So come and receive just as you are, not as you should be. All things come of thee, O Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and good and a joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Father, 
in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, and he said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink this, do this in remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mysteries of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. these are the gifts of God for you the people of God take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your heart by faith with thanksgiving you please join me for our post-communion prayer. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, 
to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. And now, may the peace of God be on each one of you this day, and until we meet again, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Alleluia! Alleluia!